what is ASAP? So ASAP began somewhere around 1972 and uh, 1974. It was a pilot project by the federal government. We were one out of 32 states that participated, which being Virginia. The pilot project took place in Fairfax, Virginia, and focused on four areas, which was enforcement, adjudication, public information, and I can't remember what the other one was, but at the end of that pilot project, the Department of Transportation pushed legislation through the General Assembly in 1975, and the Department of the Virginia Alcohol Safety Action Program was formed through Virginia Code 18.2, 271.1. Just as a note, Peninsula ASAP actually began before that legislation was pushed through. We started here in Virginia, in, in, on the Virginia Peninsula, June 3rd of 1974. And by the vision and hard work of Judge Harvell and Judge Kashadi, we were able to begin right here in the city of Newport News. Hi, my name is Rowan Williams. My name is Dr. Michelle Boone Thornton. Kaylee Edwards. Kimberly Johnson. Alfred Brussel. Angel Williams. Hi, I'm Anjanette Thomas. Sierra Lindsay. Julia Alleman. It's Carita Washington. Lieutenant Timothy Walker. Zomis Harris. It's Mario Stolut. Olivia Glover. Ruth Rosario. I'm the executive director for the Peninsula Alcohol Safety Action Program. So I'm a case manager. Administrative service manager. I am a case manager. I'm a case manager. A case manager and a compliance technician for the Ignition Interlock Program. Assistant accountant. I'm the senior accountant assistant. Case manager. Account coordinator. I am the board chair this year. Board member. I'm a member at large. I'm a board member and I am the current secretary. I'm on the bylaws committee. I've been a director since October of 2019. For two years. For 37 years. I have been here for one year. <laughs> I've actually been working here since October of 2023. I've been working here for a year. A little over six months. I've been here a year and a half. Around six months. This April 28th will mark my 16th year. I have been on the board since 2017. I think it's 10 years, uh, 2014 started. I've been on the board probably 25 years. Two and a half, almost three years. Been on the board for a year and a half. We have a direct impact on the lives of the folks coming into this program and the citizens that we serve. I like to help people. That was the main reason why I went into this job was to help people. I'll get people calling that the interlock has helped them not drink anymore, but my end goal here was just to help people make sure they get through their requirements through for the courts or the DMV. With the administrative field, back when I started, I was into computers and I helped build the database and the Finance Lace Out field. And also, I like working with customers, especially high on customer service to satisfy our customers. I deal with all kinds. I rate, I like putting out the fire, and they walk out the door smiling. So that's one part I like about my job. I enjoy helping people. The best thing about my job is knowing that when clients or defendants come into this program, that we're helping them to realize where their mistakes were, what they may be in need of, and also help them get their lives back on track. I think the best part of my job would be the people that come into the program you know, when they're done and they say, thank you so much for helping me. I feel better now after my situation. It makes me feel pretty happy to know that I've helped some people out and get their license back. I think that's the best part. What I like best about my job is I get to work with very professional and knowledgeable individuals. It's a great leadership here at Peninsula ASAP, the perks. <laughs> I like the best talking to people, the people who come in and they have like a story and they actually want to rebuild their lives. I think that's the most rewarding part of the job. Um, 
I've worked in previous roles where I didn't get much human interaction and I just love being able to talk to different people every day and hear their stories and work with them and help them get where they need to be. What I like best is I feel that in a small way I, I help people who are going through a very difficult time in their lives try to get their lives back in, in order <laughs> and, and hopefully to a better place. I believe that this work is vital and something that will help would shape the lives of all of the citizens because we're all on the roads one way or the other. Either we're driving or we're pedestrian or we're out there. So we want to make sure that the individuals are safe and that those who may be drinking and driving are taken care of, receive case management, receive treatment and rehabilitation. It, it will better the community as a whole, and it will help connect us. There are various organizations within the community that work to serve the citizens, and we are one of them. Excellent. I think Mr. Williams and his crew, Kimberly and, and the rest, are doing a very fine job. He's made great, they've made great progress addressing the goals of, of ASAP, so I, I'm very, very pleased. Why? Well, specifically, I think th there's been great improvement in the interaction with the judicial system, the judges and prosecutors. There's much better coordination of work. And I think the attitude and interaction with clientele, the, the individuals who've been accused of DUIs, is much better. It's much friendlier and help, more helpful, less con con condemning. I just think it's become a very, very fine organization. Well, the mission to improve highway safety and you know, also to educate people about addiction is a passion of mine. So uh, I was appointed to the board when I was working in addiction treatment. And so this gives me an opportunity to serve in a different way. I've held most of the positions on the board in the past. I enjoy the, the pro progress that the board is, that the whole facility has made. It's wonderful. You know, I get to, the advantage to seeing both sides of what's going on. Um, not only do I see the enforcement side of making sure families stay safe by taking drunk drivers off the road, but now I can also help those that make the decisions that they make restore themselves and get back to living a normal life. It's, it's, it's remarkable and I can attest to that in that I had to attend a seminar in Richmond where the various ASAP programs throughout the Commonwealth of Virginia compared their programs to each other and Rowan, our executive director, these other programs that were trying to figure out how to correct and fix various things and Rowan, our executive director, had already done so six months prior to and so we were essentially assisting them and telling them how to correct what they have going on here, we have going on here. And so it, it's, it's remarkable. And I've been practicing law now I believe 15 years and I do DUI defense. So I'm very familiar with this particular program and what clients have to go through and doing it. And our executive director and the committee here are absolutely remarkable, not myself, but <laughs> they are in my personal opinion. One of the things I would like to see in the program cha to change is more support statewide for the local programs, support from the local municipalities and communities that we serve. We would, I would like to see ASAP play a more a larger role in schools to help kids and ed educate parents also about the dangers of substance abuse, drugs, especially marijuana vaping that's that's going on now. I, I think we can have a direct impact in helping folks turn people's lives around. I'd like to see more work in the area of prevention, maybe working with the schools K through 12, talking about prevention, um, doing a special segment, doing, let's say, proms and things of that nature, college games where we talk about drinking and the dangers of driving and, you know, making good decisions and problem solving. Community outreach, uh, a lot of people don't know the consequences of 
drinking and driving, driving under influence. I just want to be able to reach out to the community, especially in high school or football or college, like any of those settings, just so they have a good understanding, especially with them getting their license relatively soon or within a couple years. Just have them understand the consequences of driving under the influence. Do more community outreach, especially with today's youth. Uh, we need to go to the schools and promote uh, substance abuse, drug abuse, because uh, it's high now on our community. I remember how we used to have our award ceremonies, awarding the public with the schools, the court system. I enjoyed doing that back in the past when we, we should start doing that again. I felt that it, we were more doing P, more PI&E, public administration and education, educating the public more, especially uh, the youth. So I, I see that. I, w I would like for us to go back into that direction. It could be better supported by state funding and maybe uh, some more personnel, but basically I think it's functioning very well. I would enjoy doing more outreach, especially with the youth. With substance abuse being so high right now, I believe that we are very needed in the community. So I'd like us to do more volunteering and getting the word out about the program to the public so that they know that we are really committed to making sure that our streets are safe and that people understand what the alcohol program is about. And also, I would like to see us, when the court orders defendants to perhaps have drug testing done on a regular basis, I'd like for us to be able to have some training in being able to conduct those tests so that it's more random instead of them being able to plan how they're going to circumvent the test. I would like to see more community outreach. I know in the past they've done community outreach. I know I've heard that they'd had like a bus, an ASAP bus go around to the community and I think that would be nice to do that now in schools and community colleges. If we can do a little bit more community outreach, I think that'd be fun. Well, if, if I had a magic wand, I would see more funding given to the program. So I have not had the opportunity to do any community outreach events, so I would definitely like to see more of those because one of the, another thing that I like about here is the educational portion of the program. So just going out into the community and educating about alcohol safety. Like if we did like some team building exercise, like within the program, like just us, not like the actual clients, then I mean, overall I feel like we'd be much a much stronger program. I really don't, have any improvements to see because the program's always evolving. Mr. Williams does a wonderful job bringing things forward and making sure that we stay on top of everything to the point where, you know, we are now a state model for the rest of the ASAPs to try and follow. And I'll be honest, I don't know what else he could possibly do except clone himself and place himself in other jurisdictions. I would just say building rapport with clients. We see them one time when they come in for their intake appointments, but then we don't see them face to face again really after that. So just a check in maybe with our clients or just more face to face interaction because we really, like I said, only see them that first time they come into the office. We've always struggled with staffing issues because we're a fee based program. You know, financing funds has, has always been a difficulty, and we're a relatively small staff for the amount of people we service. So I would love to see us get to the point where we can have the staff to really give that one-to-one -one attention that I think, you know, our public needs. And it would be nice if we could sort of expand more into the community and be able to do a little bit more outreach, I think, that, than we're currently doing. I think it would be great. I look at this job as a calling for me. I did, I'm not here because of nothing else but to provide the services and to help people put their lives back together. And so I look at my staff and our policy board to mirror the image and the vision that we all share and so that we can go out and do what's right for our communities. We are so cutting edge right now. We were able to, some of the improvements that we've done 
over the years is we've we've partnered with judges within the, the local court systems and developed reports that serves their purposes as far as the courts a little bit better. We've also created a way in which we can communicate real time with the court systems instead of delays with the court mailing systems. I've also worked with my staff and teach them court testimony, report writing, uh, rules of evidence, and just to make them a little bit more professional. I would like to see local programs throughout the state become a little bit more learned in, in the application of law and how it affects the programs and how it affects the courts. I think programs would benefit a whole lot more. I would like to see the directors have a more hands-on approach in their programs because I know there's many programs suffering from financial deficits and, and funding and uh, we were no different than those programs but because of innovation and thinking outside the box we were able to turn our program around and now we are on the cutting edge, one of the leading programs within the Commonwealth of Virginia. And that's as a result of staff, listening to my staff, listening to their input, working as a team. You know, as a director, you, I can't take myself too serious. We're all the same. My, we all have a role to play. My role is a little bit different. But at the end of the day, everyone contributes and everyone, everyone's contribution is important to the, the overall success of our program.